Hey, what's going hey, on, what's guys? Welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, this music is bumping. Just listen to this for a couple seconds. I'm dancing, man. Woo! So, uh, last time we joined the Literature Club, and we were tasked to write a poem. So, uh... <clears throat> I'm, I want to smash Monica or Yuri. It doesn't look like Monica's down there, so maybe I can't impress her? Well, I should save the game first before, uh, before I go on so it doesn't break on me again. So, I wanna... Mm. So, let's see here. We'll, we'll go for Yuri, since he's actually down in the corner here, so... With her, she seems like they're like kind of depressed, so maybe empty. Oh, that Im that impressed her, I guess. That impressed the uh, Siori. Uh, I'm impressing Siori. That's not what I want. I want Yuri. Maybe anxiety? There we go. Okay. Contamination, disown, charm, poof, marshmallow, explode, tragedy. Tragedy? Damn it! Uh. Essence. There we go. She's like a darker kind of person. Ambient, candy, fear, heart, heaven sent, val valentine, infinite music. Ambient? There we go. <laughs> Got it. Uh, uh, despise? Wrath? Pink? Despise. Oh, we got it. Uh, fantasy. Damn it, that's Natsuki. I don't want. I don't want to pedo on Natsuki. She's like that first year, right? I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to get her. Defeat, nightgown, scars. Uh, scars. Ooh, damn it. Uh, Doki Doki. No. Captive. Dark. Dark. Mm. Sadness. Is it's like Suzuki is Yasuki is she Sayori is is Sayori like depressed? Uh we'll see. Melancholy. There we go. Blanket, sticky, intellectual, intellectual. There we go. Heartbeat, journey, playground, diggle, destiny, <laughs> judgment, sunset, beauty, special, flowers, spinning, love, massacre, climax, judgment, judgment. Okay. Doing good, doing good. Pain, unending, amazing, awesome, question, vicious, of vivacious, portrait, incongruent, Insight. Insight. Okay. Passion, pleasure, lust, precious, color, promise, breath, smile, rose. P breath. Okay. Uh, silly, uncanny, warm, whisper, hopeless, infallible, jumpy, prayer, romance, shopping. Whisper. Ah, Zasuki. Uh, disarray, melody, nimble, hop, sensation, marriage, hope, cute, happiness, chocolate. Melody. That was Natsuki, okay. Covent, fireflies, dance, bubbles, vanilla, cheeks, vertigo, death, entropy, misery, Co covent. Okay, that was Yuri. Maybe we impressed Yuri enough. Hi again, Ryan. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> nah, don't, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I'll, I kept my word. 
Well, I'm back at the literature club. I, it, I was the last to come by, so everyone else was already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Ryan. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it? Oh, come on, like, he deserves any slack. Sierra told me you don't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan on just coming here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then we won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. Natsuki finds herself stuck between Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back on her seat. Don't worry, guys. Ryan always gives his best as long as he's having fun. That is true. I do. He helps me with busy work even without me asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sorry, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. It, is that so? <laughs> Two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Ryan can become good friends too. Um, Sayori! Hmm. As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh! Yuri even brought you something today, you know. Wait, wait, Sayori! Eh? Me? I'm not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? Never mind. Sierra made it sound like a big deal, but it's really not. What do I do? Eh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that's me and stuff to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place, so any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah. I'll make a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. And we could, y you know, discuss it if you want it. This, this is... How is this girl actually being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Y Yuri, thank you, I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Monica to kick out some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are already having a tree conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her immense expressions like she's waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around the closet. It's really I was really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more, but at the same time, I feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book she lent me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Uh huh? Crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me, and our eyes only meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I muttered this, sensing that I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably would have noticed the first place. <laughs> but I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. I'm just curious. How come you have two copies of the same book? Ah. Well, and I stopped at the bookstore yesterday. Uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about anyway? Well... Mm, Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the book, or over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. All right. I just wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. 
but as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by people who escape from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's that's kind of it's kind of dark, isn't it? Your mate saga is gonna be a nice story. That's a dark turn out of nowhere. <laughs> Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Ryan? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy some kind of story, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri's into those things. She's kind of shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that these kinds of stories, they challenge you to look from life in a strange new perspective. When a horrible things happen, it's not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own girls, their own philosophy that they believe in. That suddenly, when you thought you were related to the protagonist, they made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost any interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts. I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think I need to worry. Just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. And it's a literature club after all. Uh, that's... well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You don't have to. Uh, what are you saying? Why, why are you saying that? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Let me get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put in my bag. Alright. If it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip in the seat next to Yuri's. Ah! Yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I am distracting you or anything. Alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri's in the corner of my eye. I realize she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. So, so sorry! I, w I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I do. I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk and tilt up against the ears and hold my book more between the two of them. Ah, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we lean in a bit, our shoulders are almost touching. I feel my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Ah, I guess it makes it kind of difficult to turn a page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way I turn the page, Yuri slides under her thumb after it flips onto her side. But in holding it like this, we're hauled even closer than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. So I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face like she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh? To turn the page. Ah, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, that's okay. You're not used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. The smile! Ah! It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume she finished the page for me, so I turn it on my own violation. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, I turn the page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go on the page, letting it flutter over to her as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways. But she's also second guesses all the things that she says and does. 
Like she's afraid of something will go wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything, but they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I see. You remain silent for a moment. But Ryan, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Uh, that's so embarrassing that you think that. Wait, 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 I didn't mean in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I didn't really know you're self-conscious about this sort of thing. I guess I'm more meant that's kind of cute. Uh, uh, what are you saying all of a sudden? I... Okay, everyone! Huh! I think that's about time we share poems with each other. We might not even have enough time if we wait too long. Uh, Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that all right, Yuri? You look kind of down. Sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Ah, it's not. It's fine. Yuri loses her hand from a book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. All right. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer if I only read it with you? Um, I guess I don't have much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'd be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters on your own time. Alright. I stand up, make a mental note of where I left them off in the book, and slip back into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. Couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everybody's ready, why don't you find someone to start with? I can't wait! Siori monically and enthusiastically pull out their poems. Siori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loosely paper torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Nasuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I show my poem to first? I want to show it to Monica first, but I made it for Yuri, so we'll do it. We'll do it with her. Yuri seems most experienced, so I should start with her. I can trust her opinion, to be fair. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional! Eh? Uh, uh, what was that? Did, did I say that out loud? Yuri fist covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. I... Uh, you... He's going to hate me. Uh, you really didn't need to do it. You didn't really do anything wrong, Yuri. Eh? That's... I guess you're right. Oh, what am I getting so nervous for? <laughs> Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge comment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at the poem again. Well, I knew that! It just meant, um... Yuri trails off, unable to find the excuse. She traces her finger along the words of the poem as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah. Okay. That's the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there's some specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick, pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing to recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick writing styles separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end results of both style and expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought again, if she's demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, she sounds like an expert. Of course, it's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not to find them or building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take us some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you a valuable feedback. Nasuke can be a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Uh, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if you're using apologizing to herself, to me, or to Nasuke. You mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thoughts process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if it was a rare opportunity for her, which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't it supposed to be a literature club? Okay, oh, I can't fucking read that. Uh, Ghost Under the Light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. 
bathing. It must be this one. Last remaining street light tab withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by a sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air with the percepts of living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. I'm sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took a long time to read. Ah, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it's really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I used to write longer poems. Not at all! I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest, since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Hew <laughs> hew. Actually, the story isn't about ghosts at all, Ryan. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poems often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in the world. They usually do more than just tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps some of your poems only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her la lost remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past. Ugh, and soon be left without nothing. That's a lot more solemn playing it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. Eh? It's nothing, really. Yours was impressive yours was impressive too, so uh if anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Ah uh, You know, I was really nervous about doing all this, but in the end I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Ryan. Huh? Me too. We're going to Monica next, baby! Hoo-hoo! Hi, Ryan. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we could do better, come to the club naked! Let's go on. I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring up things, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow and time more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Ryan. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But, the sort of barrier that we'll all get past soon. Yeah, it's true. I had Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. Great job, Ryan. I was going, oh, in my head while reading it. Oh, ooh. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why. I didn't expect you to go something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way I'll always count when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know, that year likes the kind of writing, right? Writing that full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike Siori, who likes simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write stuff like that effectively. Both line people to get something out of it just by feel. Or letting them deeply analyze all the nuances. <laughs> it can take years of practice, which assuming Yuri has at this point. It never really lasts, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learning by trying new things. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. Could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find a kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased towards their own kinds of styles, but I always hope to find it suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Yes, it is! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims not to be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. Doesn't mean they always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, uh, let's read it then. Ooh, hole in the wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction of the spackle protrudes? A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No! I can't see. A reel. Blind like a film left out in the sun. It's too late. My retinas. My, ret my retinas already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It was just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep, stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out, and he, 
on the other side I was looking in. Was it me on the other side looking in? Because <laughs> I hope it was. So, what do you think? It's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it's kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. It has a lot of poems we put emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, well, I'm not sure how to put it. Well, I guess you could say I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, some, something like that. I'm kind of nervous talking about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone's better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you write a poem or story, your brain is too fixed on a specific point. If you try hard to make it perfect, you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about this is, if you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a bit dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. The fuck was that? Let's go to Sayori next. I saw Sayori. What's poppin' B? This is a good poem, Ryan. Are you sure it's your first time? Uh, of course. It's not that good. I'm the kind of guy who would be writing poems in the spare time. <laughs> I guess you're right. But that's why you impressed me. Well, let's, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously. Or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy you just wrote one. It's kind of empty of how you're really part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm staying in front of you in the club room. Er, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Ryan. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people. That's something really only good people do. Thanks, Siori. Well, I'm not sure if Siori sees a full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. I'm going to make sure that it's a lot of fun here, okay? And that will be my way of thanking you. All right, I'm going to hold you to that then. Yay. Now she'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning makes me feel like you missed me, kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away the rainy day? I look above. The sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I'd, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast. That's deep as shit, man. That's deep. Sayori. This is just a guess, but did you wait until morning to write this? No. Just, just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I just forgot to do it last night. Well, this makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Ah, yeah. I didn't mean to say it was a bad poem. It came out nice. Or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially the last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school? It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this is so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm going to write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I'll look forward to it. Let's go, Natsuki. What you got? Ryan, if you're not going to take this club seriously, then go home. Uh, harsh? What do you expect me to believe you're actually putting effort into this? Do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put in effort. We all start somewhere, right? If you're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Uh -huh. Painful to think about. Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyway. I tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. Fair enough. Well, to each other, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Yeah, this is pretty fucking stupid. Monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheese can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. 
Yeah. Told you they weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly! I like when it's easy to read and it hits you hard. I like in this poem, seeing everyone around you doing great things can really be disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set the rhyme up at the end, but made it fall flat on purpose. I'll spring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went to that than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, guess not. I decided to humor her with the last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Masuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glanced around the room. That was a little more stressful than anticipated. As if everyone is judging me from my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they were just being nice, there's no way my poems could stand up to theirs. It says literature club, after all. <sighs> I sigh. I guess is what I'll end up getting myself into. Across the room, Sierra and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Atsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch, e I watch each of their expressions change. Atsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Asuki dismissively turns his poem to the desk in one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clear about feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? Uh, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come for something nice to say? Thanks, but you really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. <laughs> if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Ryan did too. So based on that, I'm glad to give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. Nani? And Ryan liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Suki suddenly stands up. Oh, I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh, that's not what I. Uh, you, you, you just. Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Ryan appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. You... Um... Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? Wasn't the only one who's... Booze magically grew a size bigger as soon as Ryan started showing up. Whoa. Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... That doesn't involve you! I don't... I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls toward Torrance Mesa and noticed I was standing there. Ryan! She, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She just started it. She could go over stuff and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective than I wouldn't be... If, happened in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump off the reader and not force them to have to figure it out. How me explain that to her, Ryan? Oh, wait, there's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meanings the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only necessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that too, right, Ryan? Uh, well? How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whom I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So of course it's going to be... Natsuki? You're right that I liked your poem? See? Wait. That's not an excuse for you to be so mean. 
You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all! Yuri won't even take my poem seriously. Hmm. I understand. Yuri? Eh? You're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was so impressed. Well, that's... But there's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it. And it's because... And it becomes something really personal. That's why Siki feels threatened when he said her poems was cute. I see. I didn't notice that. I... I'm sorry. Yeah. But Nasuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well if you just told her how you felt. It would be a happen in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did. I was. It was her that. Nasuki, I think that's enough. You both cited some things and I, you didn't mean. Yuri apologized. Don't think you should too? Nani! Nasuki clenches her fists. In the end, nobody is taking her side. She's trapped. At this point, being defiant is only because she can't handle the pressure. I end up even being for ba more bad for her. Um, sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk and clear my head. Siari, she doesn't need to- You know what? I'm going to do that. It'll spare me from having to look at all the faces right now. Without worrying, Asuka snatches her own poem from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumbles up the poem in her hands and throws it in the trash. Natsuki! She really didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares me down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in the adjacent chair. <sighs> Everything alright? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri. How can anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Well... All right, I believe you. Thanks, Ryan. You're too kind. I'm thankful to have you as part of this club now. Er, it's nothing. One more thing. Um, that one thing that Natsuki said about, you know, I would never do anything so shameful. So, eh? What thing did Natsuki say? Eh? Um, well, never mind that. I'm gonna make some tea. Ah, good idea. Make enough for more than one person, okay? Yeah. Okay, everyone. Just about time for us to leave. How'd you feel free about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was all right. Well, mostly. Ryan, how about you? Yeah, I'd say about the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you'll learn something from your friends, too. So your trolls will turn out even better. I think to myself, did I learn a little more about Kai's poem than everybody likes? With any luck, means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nodded myself with newfound determination. Ryan! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's, let's go. <laughs> Siori beams at me. Truly has been a while since Siori and I spent so much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Siori, how about what happened earlier? Eh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Atsuki, does it... Does that kind of thing happen often? No, 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 no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't... You don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can't see why they make good friends with you. Phew. You know, Ryan, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club, but I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> it looks like Sierra still hasn't caught up with the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone nice is, but does it really need to stop there? Well, let's see what the future holds, Sierra. I pat Sierra on the shoulders. I said that more to myself than to her, it's, but it's easy to see Sierra is... Oh, God. An internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. All right, and we are back here, so save the game. There we go. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Doki Doki Literature Club. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like as always, and uh, why not subscribe for more? I know this episode is really long, uh, around 40 minutes, much longer than I usually do. Um, I mean, hopefully you guys are enjoying it. 
because I, I, I'm liking this game so far. It's actually pretty cute. Um, so yeah, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like as always. Subscribe if you're new. Comment down below. Um, not your favorite girl, but who would you try to impress in real life, you know? Go for that. Who knows? It's something interesting. So yeah, I will see all you guys in the next video.